Um, I, I tell a story in, the, in my book, Resilience, of how I came to practice many of these tools all at once um, because it's an illustration of how we can integrate these tools of resilience and come out into some kind of post-traumatic growth. And that is, I was um, teaching at the Shivananda Ashram Yoga Center in the Bahamas, and I taught there many times. It's, it's a well-established ashram, 50 years old. So I had flown across country, flown to the Bahamas. When I got there, it was late, and it was dark, and I was tired. And I was supposed to move from the dock to the boat, and I missed the boat. So I went right into the ocean, and I scrambled and grabbed hold of the boat. And my first thought was, I'm alive. I'm alive. My second thought was, my backpack is still on my back, and my computer is in my backpack. So I knew the computer was completely gone. The third thought was, because we had just had the wildfires in Northern California recently, and thousands of homes had burned down. And I thought, Linda, this is your computer. It's not your home. This is just your data. This is not your life. So I got into the boat. We went to the island. And I had four days of teaching without my computer. And I watched myself practice resilience. I watched the hand on the heart, calming down my nervous system. I watched myself give, give myself a self-compassion break. May I be kind to myself in this moment. May I accept myself exactly as I am. I did the gratitude practice of many, many, many things of being grateful for. I pulled in, the, I didn't, my cell phone was in the backpack also, so I didn't have connection with my support community at home, but people in the ashram were very, very supportive. So I could use the resources of people being kind to me and feeling like I still belonged somewhere and was connected somewhere. And then all the awareness of my patterns, I can do catastrophic thinking. That's really my big go-to. So I can go, if I sneeze, that means I'm getting a cold. That means I'm going to miss work. That means I'm going to lose my income. I'm going to lose my financial security. I'm going to lose my home. I can do that in three seconds, right? So I watch my own catastrophic thinking. I watch my own mental patterns and making a list of everything I needed to do when I got home, parking that in the future so I could be present for the teaching and just being present on the island that I was doing. So I teach that story, not that losing your computer in the Caribbean is the worst thing that ever happens to people, but watching how resilience shows up. I've been practicing these tools for a number of years and they showed up when I needed them. And that's what I want to convey to clients, that when we practice these tools and learn these skills and do them over and over and over again, little and often, those tools will show up when we need them. We think of the person to call at two o'clock in the morning. We put our hand on the heart and say, may I be kind to myself. We know how to, I'm doing the best I can. I'm a human being. Those tools of resilience will show up. And then, and then, you know, there is a difference. We know there's a difference between resilience, which is kind of bouncing back, getting back to normal, and post-traumatic growth, which is bouncing forward into the new normal that didn't exist before. And so I will also lead my clients through many, many exercises to foster that post-traumatic growth so that they're actually coming to terms with what happened, coming to terms with themselves for what happened, pulling in all their resources, and then finding all the learning and the mistakes, all of the, this went wrong, but this is what I got out of it, this is what I can take forward, and coming into that new coherent narrative where, yes, this happened, and my life changed, and here's how it changed, and here's what is happening now that never could have happened if that event hadn't happened, finding the silver lining, finding new meaning and purpose. So all of this is really kind of an exciting process for the clients as well as us uh, clinicians who are trying to help them through that process and guide the process. Because, you know, I often use this quote from Louisa May Alcott, I'm no longer afraid of storms, for I'm learning how to sail my ship. And when clients get that sense of mastery, I can be resilient. I am learning how. I can trust myself to be resilient. Then they don't have to be so afraid of the crises and catastrophes that are kind of inevitable in a human life. 